The ashes of South Africa's famous Archbishop Tutu are not really ashes, and they were not created by burning. Here are the details. The Guardian reports that the ashes of Archbishop Desmond Tutu were interred on Sunday, January 2nd. As with normal cremations, these ashes are actually the deceased person's crushed bones, but these crushed bones were produced not via burning, but via aquamation. The scientific name for aquamation is alkaline hydrolysis. This requires that the body is placed inside an airtight and pressurized cylinder. The cylinder is filled with a mixture of water and strong alkaline chemicals like potassium hydroxide. With the body inside, the liquids are heated to 150 degrees Celsius. The liquid is also gently circulated inside the canister. The process greatly accelerates the breakdown of organic materials, leaving only the bones intact. Proponents of the process say that it uses 90% less energy than flame cremation and it emits no harmful greenhouse gases. They also say that the process leaves around 32% more remains behind, meaning that it usually requires a slightly larger urn than would be required after cremation. Archbishop Tutu was famed for his humble lifestyle and his love for the environment. Before the aquamation process, his body was laid in state in the simplest and cheapest pine coffin that money could buy, as per his wishes. You can now go green even when you're dead. Here's what you need to know. Body composting could become a green alternative to burial or cremation after Colorado became the second state after Washington to allow the process last week, according to the Associated Press. One beneficiary of the new law, the Natural Funeral Company, uses boxes lined with waterproof roofing material and packed with wood chips and straw, but relies mostly on billions of microbial organisms already inside the body to initiate decomposition. The box has to reach 131 degrees Fahrenheit, or 55 Celsius for 72 hours to kill any bacteria and pathogens. Then, after three months, the soil is filtered for medical devices like prosthetics, pacemakers or joint replacements, teeth are taken out to avoid contamination from mercury and fillings, and remaining large bones are pulverized before being returned to the box. Finally, after six months, the fully decomposed remains can be spread in yards by family members. Currently, Colorado doesn't allow it to be used commercially for growing food for human consumption. This method has two advantages over conventional methods. First, it takes up less space, and second, it doesn't burn fossil fuels that can contribute to climate change or release mercury-based fumes into the atmosphere. The problem is that even if this burial method does make total sense, nightmare scenarios like the classic waking up inside the coffin distract from the real issues and make it hard to talk about. Stories like the one in 2013, for instance, when mourners in Zimbabwe were gathered around the body of a friend who inexplicably came back to life, stick around for an unhelpfully long time in our imaginations. Back then, 34-year-old Brighton Dama Zanthi had been on sick leave from his job at a bus company for some time. His condition deteriorated until one day his wife reported him dead. She laid him in a coffin in their home so friends and family could pay their respects. As people queued to say their final words, Zanthi's employer noticed his legs begin to twitch. Believing the man had returned from the dead to haunt them, people ran screaming from the room as the wife went to his side. An ambulance arrived within seven minutes to rush the man to the hospital. After two days on life support, Xanthi returned to the living, telling amazed journalists, I feel okay now. On a similar theme, there was also the story in Germany in 2015, when an undertaker got the fright of his life when one of his clients pushed open the coffin lid and asked where she was. The guy was so shocked, he passed out. After returning to his senses, he realized it wasn't the start of the zombie apocalypse and called emergency services. Paramedics arrived and confirmed that the 92-year-old woman did indeed have a pulse. She was then rushed to hospital where she died again two days later. The nursing home staff were interviewed and questioned how one of their residents came to be diagnosed as dead when she in fact wasn't. One of the staff had reportedly discovered the elderly woman in the morning and contacted their local on-staff doctor to check on her. The doctor pronounced her death and arrangements were made to move the elderly woman's body to the morgue where the undertaker got the shock of his life. Or finally, there was the guy who kicked his way out of a body bag. The 78-year-old man from Jackson, Mississippi was pronounced dead by a coroner and a nurse too early. The coroner and nurse on duty in the hospice where he lived checked his pulse but felt nothing. He was pronounced dead and his nephew saw them close the body bag. About to be embalmed some five hours later, the body bag began to stir. The kicking became stronger and the undertakers rushed to open the bag. The man was raced to a hospital. But the old guy was only able to beat death once. He died peacefully at home a month later. 
Doctors said William suffered from extremely low blood sugar, a condition which, combined with his medications, may have caused his pulse to slow so much that the medical staff were unable to detect it, leading to the error. We're all haunted by stories like these, but they stop us thinking seriously about different ways we can be buried, even though new methods are actually being developed all the time. For instance, last year a startup founded by a researcher from Delft University of Technology in the Netherlands developed a living coffin made from a special fungus. Dubbed the living cocoon, the coffin is made of mycelium and helps the body decompose more efficiently. It also removes toxic substances such as metal and varnish from coffins and synthetic fibers. Mycelium is a fungus-like bacterial colony that lives underground in the complex root structure of trees, plants, and fungi. According to a report on DuthNews.nl, the company has already grown 10 coffins, and these are already on offer in the coffin collections of two Dutch funeral companies. Ideas like these have been around for a long time, and different cultures have different approaches. For instance, in 2019, Luke Perry's daughter Sophie recently revealed on Instagram that her late father chose an alternative form of internment in the form of a biodegradable mushroom suit. The mushroom suit, or infinity burial suit, developed by J. Rim Lee of Green Burial Company Koyo, claims to neutralize toxic pollutants such as lead and mercury that are released into the environment during decomposition and cremation. The suit, made of organic cotton, contains biomix made from mushrooms and other microorganisms that aids decomposition, cleans toxins in the body and soil, and delivers nutrients to plants. According to the Koeo website, mushrooms break down material by emitting enzymes and are able to eliminate both organic toxins and heavy metals in the environment through a process called myocore mediation. Koeo's suit requires no special preparations. The body is simply dressed in it and then buried at an optimal depth of 4 feet with or without a casket. The mushroom suit costs $1,500, which the company says is far less than traditional burial options that can run up to $6,000. Traditional methods of burial can be bad for the environment. Now, a Dutch company has developed an eco-friendly coffin that can remove toxic substances and produce better conditions in which to grow new trees and plants. Here is what you need to know. A startup founded by a researcher from Delft University of Technology in the Netherlands called The Loop has developed a living coffin made from a special fungus, the university said in a press release. The living cocoon helps the body to decompose more efficiently, speeding up the process to as little as two years compared to over a decade. It also removes toxic substances such as the metal and varnish from coffins and synthetic fibers. This is because the coffin is made of mycelium, a fungus-like bacterial colony that thrives underground in the complex root structure of trees, plants, and fungi. Mycelium is grown into the shape of the coffin and then dried. When exposed to water after burial, it begins to grow again. Mycelium breaks down material by emitting enzymes and is able to eliminate both organic toxins and heavy metals in the environment through a process called mycoremediation. It acts like a filter and can convert these toxins into nutrients. According to a report on DuthNews.nl, the coffins are lightweight but can hold up to 200 kilograms or about 440 pounds. The company has already grown 10 coffins, and these are already on offer in the coffin collections of two Dutch funeral companies. According to the Living Cocoon's designer, Bob Hendricks, mycelium is constantly looking for waste materials to convert into nutrients for the environment. It does the same with toxic substances, including oil, plastic, and metal, he said, noting that mycelium was used to help clean up Chernobyl. The Living Cocoon works in a similar way to the Infinity Burial Suit, which is basically a shroud embedded with mycelia spores. The actor Luke Perry was recently buried in one. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.